The movie begins with a man driving a van into a parking garage near a park where the Pittsburgh Pirates play. He parked where it was blocked off and put a quarter in the parking meter. Then, he hid behind a wall with a sniper rifle. He looked through the scope and shot several people on the walking path by the river. After that, he drove away quickly. When the police arrived, they found a shell casing and James Barr's fingerprint on the parking meter. Barr, a former U.S. Army sniper, was found at home and arrested. They also found his van, surveillance footage of it entering and leaving the garage, equipment for making bullets, and a sniper rifle. During interrogation, Barr didn't confess but instead wrote, get Jack Reacher, on a notepad. Reacher, a former military officer, had been off the radar for two years. Despite doubts about finding him, Reacher showed up at the district attorney's office in Pittsburgh after seeing news about the shootings. Rodan and Emerson took Reacher to the hospital where Barr was in a coma. Barr hadn't been protected and was attacked by other prisoners during transport to jail. Reacher wanted to see the evidence against Barr, but Rodan refused, only wanting to know why Barr asked for Reacher specifically. After being denied access, Reacher decided to leave. Rodan stopped him, demanding to know what he knew about Barr. Barr's defense attorney, Helen Rodan, arrived. Reacher was surprised she was the DA's daughter. Helen wanted to depose Reacher but he clarified he wasn't Barr's friend or a defense witness. He agreed to answer her questions before leaving. They went to a cafe, where Helen recorded their conversation. Reacher found out Helen's firm believed her father wrongly convicted others and wanted Barr to have a fair trial. Reacher revealed Barr's guilt based on past army investigations. Barr had confessed to killing four defense employees, not prosecuted due to their illegal activity involvement. Reacher believed Barr shot in Iraq to relieve tension. Despite once threatening Barr, Reacher decided not to pursue him after learning Helen's investigator had access to all evidence. But, Helen worries about Barr not getting a fair trial and asks Reacher for help in investigating. Reacher agrees but asks Helen to visit the victims' families first to understand them better. Unfortunately, her visits are met with anger, and she even fears for her safety when one father, Rob Ferrier, gets upset and shows a gun on the table. Helen apologizes and leaves. Outside Ferrier's house, Alex Rodan confronts his daughter about her actions. He warns her that defending Barr and working with Reacher could ruin her career and questions if she's doing it to hurt him. He also asks if she told Reacher she couldn't pay him and if her firm disapproved of her investigation. Helen angrily drives off. Reacher visits the crime scene and notices Linsky, who had taken money from Brookseal Construction, watching him. After inspecting the area near the stadium, parking garage, and Fort Duquesne Bridge, Reacher thinks the evidence against Barr seems too perfect. He doubts a skilled sniper like Barr would choose the parking garage and believes he would have fired from the bridge. The evidence against Barr includes a bullet that missed, a brass cartridge found by Emerson, Barr's fingerprint on a quarter, and surveillance footage of his van. Reacher thinks these clues suggest someone careless or not interested in getting away. Later, at a busy bar, Sandy approaches Reacher offering a quiet place to talk, but he declines. She loudly protests, attracting attention, and her brothers approach. Reacher sarcastically questions if Sandy is a good kisser, and a fight breaks out as Jeb Oliver challenges him. In an alley, a man named the Zek confronts Linsky, indicating he made a grave mistake. Linsky pleads, promising to make amends. The Zek shares a horrifying story of survival and orders Linsky to chew off his own fingers. Linsky hesitates but is shot by Charlie when he fails. Meanwhile, Helen finds no useful leads in Barr's credit card report. Reacher suggests Barr might have frequented gun ranges based on gas purchases. Reacher visits the default auto parts store where Sandy works. The manager demands ID and a reason for Reacher's visit. Reacher threatens him and speaks to Sandy privately. She confesses to being manipulated by Jeb and agrees to lend Reacher Jeb's car. As Reacher leaves the store, Sandy suggests meeting later. Reacher advises her to leave town for a few days and offers money to help. He then heads to Jeb's house but is followed by Vlad, one of Zek's henchmen. Vlad attacks Reacher but is overpowered. After incapacitating Vlad, Reacher interrogates a man about Jeb's whereabouts and takes his car keys before leaving. Reacher tells Helen that Jeb's murder was staged, and he shares his suspicions about the evidence against Barr, finding it too perfect. Although Helen briefly doubts Reacher's credibility due to her father's warnings, Reacher shares his personal philosophy and asks Helen to investigate a silver Audi following him. Zek contacts Charlie and Vlad, informing them that their cover is blown. Helen struggles to understand the motive behind the murders until Reacher gives her a note with Olene Archer written on it. This leads Helen to discover Mrs. Archer's involvement in a lawsuit, revealing her as the intended victim. Reacher explains the sniper's strategy and advises Helen to find someone connected to Barr to uncover the true culprit. 
Helen protests that it's not her job to pursue the killer and decides to end the investigation. Meanwhile, Sandy is attacked and killed by Charlie and Vlad. As Reacher is chased by the police, he spots Charlie and Vlad and pursues them. Reacher manages to evade the police with the help of bystanders and escapes on a bus. Emerson and Alex Rodan visit Helen, informing her that Reacher is suspected of killing Sandy and was involved in a fight at Jeb's house. The next day, Reacher visits the Hinge Creek Gun Club to question the owner, Martin Cash, about Barr. Cash denies knowing Barr but challenges Reacher to demonstrate his shooting skills. Reacher impresses Cash and earns his trust, leading to a discussion about Barr. Cash reveals Barr's involvement with Charlie and their experiences in Iraq, leading Reacher to suspect Charlie as the actual shooter. Jack contacts Helen to inform her of his discovery and plans to return to Pittsburgh in three hours. During their conversation, Helen reveals to her father, Alex Rodan, about Lebenhauer Enterprises' corrupt practices, including colluding with corrupt officials and potentially involvement in killings. Helen tells her father that her life may be in danger due to her involvement with Lebenhauer, but she declines protective custody, fearing it might put her in more danger. Later, Detective Emerson shocks Helen unconscious with an electric prod, and Charlie and Vlad abduct her. Reacher calls Helen's phone, and Charlie answers, threatening her safety unless Reacher meets them within an hour. Reacher surprises Charlie by revealing his knowledge of the shooting at Hinge Gun Range and his plans to go to the authorities with the evidence. Charlie threatens Helen's safety, but Reacher agrees to meet them on his terms. At a rock quarry, Reacher proposes a one-on-one -on -one fight with Charlie. As the confrontation unfolds, Reacher manages to evade gunfire and wounds one of the shooters. He engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Charlie, eventually overpowering him. Inside the office, Reacher confronts Emerson and Helen. Reacher kills Emerson and interrogates Zek, forcing him to reveal his name and criminal activities. Reacher then instructs Helen to call the police. As they wait for the police, Reacher confronts Zek about his crimes and eventually shoots him. Helen is shocked by the events and expresses concern about justice being served. Reacher assures her and leaves with Cash as the police arrive. Helen is upset that Reacher is leaving and fears she may never see him again. Reacher tells her that she and her father will figure things out, leaving Helen with mixed emotions. Helen visits Barr, who has awoken from his coma but doesn't recall the shootings. She shows him photos of the stadium, parking garage, and bridge, asking him how he would have committed the crime. Barr's assessment aligns with Reacher's earlier suggestions. Helen assures Barr that everything will be alright, but Barr fears Reacher coming after him, knowing his actions. Meanwhile, Jack is traveling on a bus when he overhears a man threatening a woman. He decides to intervene. The movie ends, leaving the outcome of this new situation unknown.